Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Let us now take a moment in silent meditation and focus on what you see, hear, sense all around you. Let the Spirit of God speak through the birds of the air, the breezes between the trees, all signs of God's ever-present love. Let us now sing together the Gloria in Excelsis. with you and also with you let us pray grant to us Lord we pray the spirit to think and do always those things that are right that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever amen a reading from the second book of Samuel. The king David ordered Jacob and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave orders to the, all the commanders concerning Absalom. So the army went out into the field against Israel, and the battle was fought in the forest of Ephraim. The men of Israel were defeated there by the servants of David, and the slaughter there was great on that day. 20,000 men. The battle spread over the face of all the country, and the forest claimed more victims that day than the sword. Absalom happened to meet the servants of David. Absalom was riding on his mule, and the mule went under the thick branches of great oak. His head caught fast in the oak, and he was left hanging between heaven and earth, while the mule that was under him went on. And ten young men, Job's armor-bearers, surrounded Absalom and struck him and killed him. Then the Cushite king, and the Cushite said, Good tidings for my lord the king, for the Lord has vindicated you this day, delivering you from the power of all who rose up against you. The king said to the Cushite, Is it well with the young man Absalom? The Cushite answered, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise up to you to do you harm be like that young man. The king was deeply moved, and all went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, he said, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would that I had died instead of you, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is 130. We'll read it in unison. Out of the depths I have called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to make note what is done amiss, 
O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore be imitators of God, as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loves us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that comes down from heaven. And they were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we knew? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread 
that comes down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Today begins the series on hunger, the first of four series. Today's gospel has us reflect on Jesus as the bread of life, not merely the bread that sustains the body, but rather bread that sustains the soul, bread that will have one live forever. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me Will never be thirsty. The gospel comes as good news to those of us who are hungering for something more than bread, to those of privilege, perhaps who have all we need and material wealth and more, who go to the grocery store and try to decide which cereal would meet our needs out of the choices and variety of over 40 different options or which cut of meat would best fit our garden party. Perhaps for us, the words of Jesus today might move us from the table to reflect on something spiritual, something life-sustaining, something beyond our satiated tummies. The gospel might also come as good news to those of us who hunger for the bread and yet have little. For those of us who live whose lives have been compromised by poverty. Those of us who go to bed with hungry stomachs. Those who of us who too often dine on somebody else's leftovers. Those of us who don't know if their next meal will, will, will come and in what form. The good news for us comes with the knowledge that hunger is not forever that in Christ there are those willing to share of their abundance so that hunger need not be our only reality. Some time ago, I was on a credo week, which is for clergy is a time of renewal and refocusing on one's vocational life. And one of the speakers led us through an exercise involving intentional eating. In other words, instead of coming to the table and gobbling everything up, in five minutes, we were asked to sit and to wait, to take the time to survey the meal on our plate, to consciously think about where it came from and at whose hands and hard work it was produced. We were then instructed to take our first bite, to place our utensil down and to chew at least eight times before swallowing savoring the flavor and texture of each bite. While it surely was a great exercise, I can tell you that there was more than a little grumbling on my table. My colleagues found it rather challenging. And, and many were, uh, were left rather hungry. They were hungry just to devour their food and they would be happy and go on to the next program is what they had planned Yet it stayed with them. It challenged them. It had them reflect on all of us. It had us all reflect on, on that, that importance of, of what we're doing and taking the time to consciously think about um, the grace and the gift of, of food and where it, where it came from and the people and sacrifice and, and hard work that produced it. So it had us consciously think of that. Feeding programs are part of our ministry throughout our church. We have fabulous and well-managed soup kitchens where full healthy meals are served to anyone who shows up. Membership is not required. Safety is expected and for the most part honored. One of my favorite soup kitchens uh, was in the city of Providence, Rhode Island, where I served that I was, uh, that was run by the Sisters of Mercy, and the place is called Macaulay House, named after their founder. It was a great spot, 
a uh, converted family residence where the staff consisted of a manager, mostly a sister of Mercy, and a cook. And when I was there, the cook's name was Gladys. And uh, Gladys was a woman who was once on the street herself. She was quite the salty personality and she didn't take guff from anybody. And if you came to help, she made sure you pitched in and from cutting up vegetables or sweeping the floor or cleaning bathrooms, whatever was needed, Gladys made sure that you were carrying your weight. Many of the volunteers came from communities they served. A van would go out and pick up folks, bringing them to and from Macaulay House. As a young religious, it was the best education I ever got and what being a Christian was really all about. We were given the option to take time to reflect theologically on our experience, and it was shared that our time of engaging in relationships with those who came to eat and work at the house was most incredibly impacting. It was truly more than the food, but it was being fed by and feeding others that truly was what was satiating our hunger. As you may know, our parish participates in supporting RAIN, or Rochester Family Promise, which provides meals and shelter for homeless by incorporating area churches in this effort. St. Luke's is a support parish for the Assumption Roman Catholic Parish here in Fairport, meeting some of the needs by preparing meals when called upon. One of the major things that we're called to do is to take time to be with the families as they gather. In other words, it's not just about food, but rather hospitality and love that we render that make a real difference. We also extend our support to programs such as the Meal and More that functions out of Christ Church in the city and a variety of other services as well. I hope we take the opportunity to engage with these ministries, to lend a hand, to offer our support, to continue to bring the bread of life to those who hunger. Amen. Let us recite together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. 
for the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Prince, our bishop, Ken, our rector, Susan and Sherry, our wardens, the vestry, and all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, pray for St. John's Church, Canandaigua, Theological Education and Leadership Development, the Reverend Peter Peters, the Reverend William Peterson, business persons, employers, the United Church of South India, the Most Reverend Thomas Kinjarapali Omen. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. Let us now confess our brokenness before God and one another. God of mercy and compassion, we gather together realizing that we have broken faith with you and with each other. We have failed to recognize the moments of grace in ourselves and in our neighbors and all around us. We acknowledge our complicity to the evil in our world that enslaves us. With sincerity and truth, we seek repentance. We seek to turn our hearts back to you in your loving embrace. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ that we may abide in your love and live freed from our sin. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you your all of your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places. One true and loving God, through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom of from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of Blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy.
and honor are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called the people to yourself as light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign, and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time gather us with blessed Luke and all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God to the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. God, God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another. And you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May the wisdom, the love, and the grace of God strengthen you to be the hands and heart of Christ in this world. In the name of the undivided Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Thanks for watching and visiting us at St. Luke's today. If you would like more information about our church and ministries, please visit us on our website, find us on social media, or contact us directly using the information at the bottom of your screen. We're so glad you joined us today. Have a great day.